All right. We're back. We're back. Scott's still here? Yep. I'm still here. <laughs> How are you? So we're ready to talk about MVC. Yes. ASP.net MVC. Excellent. I'm using my radio voice because I'm down an octave today. <laughs> let's take it down. How are you? <laughs> All right, let's jump into the slides for a right. bit. And we'll talk very, very quick slides here to just talk about what's in MVC for. Um, so as a reminder, we're at this uh, second spot on the map. Um, this is part of the one ASP.net thing. Mm -hmm. Yep, we're going to be talking about MVC, uh, this model view controller stuff sits on top of ASP.NET. We can't say that enough. You mm -hmm. can mix and match these things, just like I was doing earlier with async. I had that calling some web APIs and things like that, and always mix these things up. Okay. All right, so here's what we're going to be talking about this session. And really, you know, not too many slides. This is really going to be a coding build up a site demo. Uh, but we're going to be looking at an introduction to the MVC model. Uh, we're going to be creating a new site. We'll do a, a model view controller, and we're going to do some entity framework code first and migrations. If we're really ahead of schedule, we might even deploy it. Uh, so MVC, like we said, is an alternative. This is just one of many um, framework choices you have running on top of ASP.NET. So here's the. Uh, you know, you've got to do the obligatory slides of how things work. And I didn't want to just do three boxes of model view and controller because those things never seemed to work for me when I was learning it. So you've got a request that comes in. And that request, uh, through a feature called routing, goes to a controller. So as Scott pointed out earlier, a URL doesn't map to a file. and maps to something else. Mm -hmm. And so in this case, it's a controller action, uh, which is just a method. So that method does some stuff. It's a highly technical term. Yes. It does some stuff, and then it needs it. Its end result is some kind of data. Now that data could be, you know, a customer object, or that data could just be, you know, a, a string of text mm -hmm. or whatever. So it has something that it needs. It's done with. So a lot of the work of model view controller is to separate things out. Things have specific responsibilities. So a controller accepts a URL request, does something, comes up with with a result, and passes it on. So it passes that in the form of a model. So I've got that in, uh, displayed here as a lovely green um, sort of suitcase looking thing. Um, so it gives that model to a view. The, the job of the view is to take a model and display it. So this is, the view is all about presentation. It's taking that model data and displaying it in a way that you know, we're going to show to an end user. So the important thing here is logic is in that controller. Data is in the model, and presentation is in the view. So then extrapolating, if my view had code that decided to talk to the database. Wrong. Wrong. I would be very angry with you. Yes. So that, you know, that's very, very key. And when I look at, a lot of times I'll answer questions, and I'll look, people will say, I'm having trouble with this code in my view. And you know, I'll go through, and I'll figure it out, and I'll say, step one get this code out of your view. And there's ways to do that. You can use you know, helper code, or you can figure out you know, what should I be doing different. A lot of the times, the answer to that is your model is trying to map directly to a database instead of to something that the view can easily process. So if you've got a lot of logic in your view, you're probably using the wrong kind of model class. Um, so then when we're done, we've got a response, and we send that out to the user. In this case, it's looking like a pie chart, but I'm going to guess most of the time it's going to be HTML. Um, so again, here on my your clipboard is really on point. Today. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So lovely. here in our uh, time to first demo, we're on our demo. Uh, so here I've got file new project. Um, so I'm going to do uh, an MVC4 application. This is my 36th MVC application. I'm rather proud. You never do demos. <laughs> You know, I was joking with you last night that I should create a MVC application 526. So my next one today would be 527. It would probably give you better scores on your reviews. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, actually, maybe I have some you know numbers I've got to hit for a number of MVC applications. So here, when I do file new project, I've got a lot of options. And this box is slowly filling up. So we've got an empty template, which is actually really kind of empty this time around. It'll, it gives you. It's a little bit more than an empty web application. It's got some of the MVC wiring set up, but not much. So this is for people that really are experienced with MVC and want to kind of put everything together themselves. Basic is, you know, basic application. It's got a funny story about basic and empty. Yes. <clears throat> so we had one called empty, mm -hmm. and it had a controller folder and a model folder and a bunch of and a view folder. And people said, that's not empty. <laughs> so basic 
is that empty one. Right. And empty is, is now <laughs> empty. We're serious. For real now, it's empty. For real empty. Yes. Yep. OK. When we get to internet application, which is what I recommend, when people are building a new MVC application, I recommend they start with an internet application. This is actually something where this is what we'll use today. And this is when you do file new project and hit F5, it's actually going to display a website. And this also has an account controller set up. So this means that you could log in and you could, it even, uh, enables like a social login, like you could do Facebook or you know, Google or Microsoft account. So then, uh, in a corporate scenario especially, you're going to want, instead, you're not going to want people to log in with their Google account or whatever, you're going to want to log, log in with their domain password. So here we've got an intranet account. Exact same thing as an internet account, except it's set up to work with Windows authentication. Mm -hmm. Funny story, last night as I was practicing my demos, I created accidentally an intranet application and it did not work <laughs> because I was not logging in with, my, with a Windows authentication. Uh, finally, down on this bottom row, we've got a mobile, temp mobile application. We'll look at this later in the afternoon when we're looking at mobile web development. This is kind of something that's set up to create a, a web application that's gonna work well on a mobile device. Uh, this is using the jQuery mobile template. We've got Web API. We've got a session on that later. Single pay, uh, Web API is for services. So this is, people started, you know, they really liked MVC as a way to generate content, and they were using it to generate XML and JSON and all these things, and we said, we can do a little better for you, and so that's where Web API comes in. Um, single page application is for the style of application where you, uh, if you think about like Outlook Web Access or Gmail, something where you navigate to a page and, and um, you just talk Jason. You, you don't uh, refresh the page since then. Mm -hmm. And we've got a separate, we've got some stuff on that later. And finally, Facebook, we've got stuff on that later. So, And one thing to point out in that 2012.2, mm -hmm. we, um, we added even more stuff. We did. <coughs> and, and we made it so that you can, so here there's a single page application. Uh, but we made it so that, uh, Scott talked earlier about these, the Visual Studio extensions and the way that you can put in something like Web Essentials or something like that. Mm -hmm. So we also have uh, extension. we enable people to add to this box using Visual Studio extensions. Mm -hmm. so people have done that with things like Breeze and Ember.js and all these things. One show note, uh, the gentleman is telling me that you should but you said refresh your screens? You want them to actually refresh their web browsers, or how would they get those slides? Yeah, uh, refresh their browser, and then under the facts section, they'll find links to the slides. So they've added links to the slides. Now, I assume if you refresh your browser, it's going to rebuffer the stream. It'll be fine. But they have added links to the slides if you're, if you're asking about the slides. OK, great. All right, so I'm going to first stop zooming around, and I'm going to create a new internet application, number 36. So what this is doing, let me see if I can catch it while it's going. If I zoom in, I don't think it's happening for me. There it is. It's adding actually a bunch of, no, I didn't catch it. Right, but it's adding NuGet packages. Right. So File New Project actually uh, uses NuGet packages to bring a lot of functionality in. So this is all the stuff. We've got jQuery, we've got uh, routing and all these things, and those are added via NuGet. So they're, you know, they're manageable and we can update them. So the thing I want to start with is looking at the Solution Explorer. And let's look at how things are organized. And you know, when I was getting started with, with MVC, my concern was, wow, there's a lot of files. There's more to do. Like when I was doing web forms, I had one page, and I kind of had one thing to look at. And with MVC, we're, we're controlling that responsibility. So we're saying controllers are here, views are here, models are here, those, those things I talked about on the diagram earlier. So here we've got a folder for controllers, we've got a folder for models, and we've got a folder for views. But what's nice is that these are generally pretty small files. So in any application of any kind of reasonable complexity, things start to get hard to manage. You, mm -hmm. are, you, you, need to, you either have an enormous ASPX page, or you need to start breaking that apart into something that manages data, some way that manages you know, what you're your things look like and all that. So this is a nice organization to start with. So I'm actually, I'm going to start by deleting the account controller and, and some of the account stuff. And I'm only doing that so that we start out, you know, with something that's really simple. So I'm going to eliminate a few distractions with that. Um, and we'll look at how those, those logins work later in the day. Um, but so now I've got, I've got a very simple home controller. So if I browse to this, actually I'll do that real quick. 
So if I browse to this, uh, I will get a build error. Models, and I'll just delete this. Uh, auth config, get rid of auth config. There's one thing I forgot to, okay. Do you want to explain to the thousands of people who are watching what you just did? Yeah, so, so what, I was, <coughs> what I'm doing here is some of the tooling and some of the, things that, the steps I'll be going through, um, if I've got that account controller, that account controller is really helpful mm -hmm. when I do file new project and, and run my application and I'm able to log in, mm -hmm. but it does kind of clutter things up. Uh, with so I'm going to be showing Entity Framework migrations later, and I've got to define a context. So, so if you don't need it, you just remove it. I'll just remove it for now. And, I, and the, you know that's a great thing with a lot of the things we provide for you. If you don't like them, you can pull it, you can change them around, right? That is kind of the way that the group is going right now, is it? If there are things that you want to unplug and plug in your own thing, yeah, you know, it doesn't bother us at all. <laughs> it's you know you talk to I talk to people and they'll say you know I'm I'm not offended this, if it works for you you know <laughs> that's great. So here's this file new project and this is this view. Now if I actually went to slash home slash index, I get the same thing. So this 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 URL that we're looking at slash home slash index. Wow, I just so there we go slash home slash index. So. Uh, Let's look at where that came from and what happened. So talking about what we did earlier, slash home slash index. So we've got a home controller and an index method. So this uses something in uh, MVC, uh, a convention approach. So it's convention-based programming where we say, if somebody browses to slash home, we're going to send them to the home controller. And then if they browse to slash index, then we're going to use this index action method. So this is going to bundle something up and return it. So and then return view is going to go over into our views home index. So in this in this you know as far as keeping things organized, if I'm working on this views home index method, I'm mm -hmm. going to look in the oh, I'm going to look in the views home index file. Here, do, um, indulge me for a second. Yes. Come up, go ahead and zoom out. Yeah. And go over into your home controller. Okay. <clears throat> Make a new function and call it foo. All right. Public action result foo. All right. Okay. <clears throat> and then go ahead and just return view. Okay. And then run this app. You're in the home controller, mm -hmm. so you can say slash home. Go ahead and say slash home slash foo. I'm a little scared. You should be scared. I've messed up your demo. What's interesting about that? Okay, so I'm seeing an error message, and it's telling me that it looked for a view. Right, right it looked for a view called foo. You made a function in your mm -hmm. home controller, but it's looking for a view, for a view called foo. This gives you a sense of that convention over configuration. Right. Right? This is actually telling you where it looked, the file names that it looked for. You can even see that it's looking for two different kinds of views. It's looking for ASPX views first mm -hmm. and CSHTML views second. Little, uh, little known tip for you, if you want to remove the view engine for the web forms view engine and get a little tiny perf you know, kick, you can do that and then you would see CSHTML files being looked for only. Great. Okay. All right. This shows you also that it says view foo. That foo name came from the method foo. Yeah. Okay. So there's no XML file in the old Microsoft. You'd, there'd be an yeah, XML file configure. somewhere. Yeah. So here it was looking for it was looking in the views home folder and it was looking for foo.csh. Looking for a, a controller called home mm -hmm. and then a foo csHTML or a shared one. Right. And so it's important with these. You know, conventions are good until you want to change them. And so these are overridable. If mm -hmm. you wanted to, we could go in here and we can mess with how the URLs here. This tells me that uh, I would go to register routes. So now we've kind of cleaned things up. We used to put a lot of stuff in global AS, uh, ASAX. Mm -hmm. So now this is in route config in the app start folder. And so this, this shows how that convention here, this is saying if I don't specify a controller, it's going to be home, and if I don't specify an index, it's going to be action. This specifies how those URLs translate to a controller action. Exactly. So now let's go in and create a model. So that was a very simple, it was just showing a string on a page. Mm -hmm. uh, so now I'm going to go in and I'm going to create a person class. 
So I right click on model, and here is one of the first things where, I, where you know, you may, uh, first I need to stop running. Uh, so I'm gonna right click, add, and I'm gonna add a class. So this is an important thing to, to you know, think about. This is not a you know, MVC model class or whatever. This is just a standard class, it's, right? It's POCO. Right. Plain old CLR class. Okay. So now in this class, I'm going to uh, add some properties. So first I'm gonna add an ID, and I'll add a string, first name, and I'm using these snippets here. I hit P-R-O-P, so that you know, makes it a little easier to, to fill that in. Uh, okay, so that's all that's required for a model. So this is really just, there's no logic in here. This is really just something that's going to transfer data. Uh -huh. So now I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to intentionally not build, and I'm gonna show you what would happen if I wanted to add, to scaffold this out without building first. So if I, I'm, I'm doing this mostly so that if you see this happen, oops, okay, well this, this person is not going to appear on that list, okay, um, because I haven't built. So this tooling is actually driven off of building. And I'm just pointing that out in case you run into this, then you'll know what was happening. Right, happened. because that tooling isn't parsing the file. Right, right. It's actually using reflection, and it needs to reflect over, <coughs> excuse me, over it needs to reflect models. over something that's been built. Yeah, okay, so now I've built, and I'm adding a controller. So I'm gonna add a person controller, and I'm going to use this default template of MVC controller using read, write, actions, and views. I've got some choices here. I could do an empty one, I could, I could uh, you know, use empty read, write, actions and fill them in myself, but uh, a good easy way to get started is just, just to use that MVC controller with any framework. So now I'm, I've selected my model class. So I am telling that controller that it is going to be using, a, it's going to be returning a model class uh, of person. And then finally, I'm going to use a data context. I'm gonna create a new data context. So I'll just call this the person contact. And that's it. So now when I hit add, what this is doing, this is, this is called scaffolding, and this is adding, uh, this is adding a new controller. It's adding all the action methods, and it's also adding all the views for those. So this is, this is going to allow me to go in, edit, delete, and you know, work with those, with those people. Um, so one, one more step before I, before I actually you know, spin this up and start looking at this. I'm going to enable migrations. So this is an entity framework uh, feature. And really what migrations let you do is manage the evolution of your model and your database to keep those things in sync. So, over time, I may think, you know, I want to add a new property, or I want to change how I'm, how I'm, you know, what's in my model, and I need to keep my database in sync with those changes. The two have to work together, and so what I'm going to do is with migrations, it's it's a way to programmatically define how you know changes in the model and how those map to my database. Mm -hmm. So in my uh, in my package manager console, first I'm going to say enable migrations. So I guess I should zoom in in there. So when I call enable migrations, it's going through and it's it's uh, setting up this migration. So a migrations folder <coughs> folder has just appeared there on the in the solution. Right. So this is and it's opened this up here. This is a configuration. I could use a seed method to add some sample people. And fortunately for me, I've actually got a person class and all that. So if and that's I, <laughs> actually what you were doing before in your album example, right? You, you seeded a bunch of albums, and that's why it took a moment to start up. Because it was creating the database and then using that seed data. Mm. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back into the package manager console, and I'm gonna create an initial migration. So I'm gonna say add migration, initial. So now this initial migration is where it's gonna go through and it's actually looked at my model class and it said, okay, your model has an ID and a first name and a last name and the ID is an int and we're gonna assume it's an identity mm -hmm. because it's called ID and the first name is a string and last name is a string and all that. Okay, uh, so then uh, I have to do one more thing. I've enabled, I've added that migration and then I need to call update database. So when I call update database, that's going to go through and actually, you know, update my database with those changes. If I had, 
data in the seed method, it would have run that. Um, so here's, you know, here it's outputting and telling me exactly what I've done. And if I, you know, I could have used uh, verbose to see the actual SQL that was generated. So now that I've got that, I can run this and it's going to go through and it's going to be tracking my changes to that model over time. So we're going to see when I run, I'm not going to see that person, any of that people stuff yet because mm -hmm. I'm still on that home controller. So in order, I called it a person controller. So if I want to actually start working with it, I'm going to browse to slash person. So the convention is person in the URL maps to person controller. <coughs> so now I've got, you know, a create new experience. I can go in here and I can say, you know, Bob Smith. You can tell I've created Bob Smith before. Okay, so now we've got Bob Smith in the database. And we've Thrilling, truly a tour de force. I, you know, it's too bad we can't hear the applause. Yeah, there, there it is. There's you have achieved scaffolding. <laughs> Nicely done, sir. If, I, if there was a microphone, I would drop that microphone okay. right now. <laughs> uh, okay, so, so that really, you know, that, what that did, let's look at that person controller in a little more depth. So when we look at the index page, we browse to slash index. All it's doing, and remember that model view controller paradigm here, the controller has one job, respond to a URL and return some data to a view, right? So it, this URL request, it's going to get data from the database in a list, and it's going to return it to the view. So now let's look at that view and see how it's, the, the view's one job is to take data and display it in a syntax. And it should not be, you know, we're not looking for logic there, we're looking for presentation. Now, now <clears throat> pardon me, an interesting point of note from a religious perspective, mm -hmm. forget, <clears throat> pardon me guys, <coughs> an interesting religious argument is here, you're passing in db.people. Yeah. So you're actually, you're actually passing in your model. Mm -hmm. for, for basic stuff, for, for things like this, where your model is done with POCO, with plain old CLR objects, right. that's usually fine. Mm -hmm. But there is an interesting religious argument where some people would say you should have a people view model. Right. Because remember how you told me before that your view shouldn't be doing database access? Exactly. There's a little bit of implied database access when you pass that person object into the view. Mm -hmm. Because someone could potentially in the view write against link, thereby causing okay, indirectly Database access. Yeah. Again, uh, and by, by religious argument, I mean you it's can argue style. about it all day and right. no one's going to win. Yeah. That's what I mean when I say religious argument. But something to think about. Yeah. Something to think about whether or not you want to do views or projections of mm -hmm. your model or just pass your models around. Honestly, it depends on what the view looks like. Right. So in this case, I would say if, if, we know, if this is as far as this application goes, which I'm going to tell you, we've, we've only got a few minutes left. This is as far as this application is going to go. So in this case, the right thing is to return people. Mm -hmm. However, in any application I build that actually any amount of time, I always use a view model because it always is going to start changing. And if you get into this spot, and you'll know you're in the spot when you start saying, well, I need to show this more data. So I need to go in and change my view. Right. If I need to change, or excuse me, I need to change my model. So if you're adding stuff to your model to get it to appear on the screen, you need to think about what you're doing. Right, that's, that's, that's a sign you're doing that's it wrong. That's the alarm going exactly. off, right? So that's the point where, and, and as Scott's pointing out, this we could be, you know, var people model equals new, and we create some, you know, we create something else, we have some other class, and then that's what we return. So, um, you know, usually any kind of, uh, like there's an NBC Music Store tutorial, we have, you know, albums and, and uh, genres and stuff, but when you actually are browsing through the store, you, our view model may, you know, if you're in your shopping cart, it's going to return uh, how many albums you have in, your list of albums, your shopping cart total, things like that. Okay. So here we've got our controller action, and its job is to do some work and return some sort of package of information to a mm -hmm. view. So now let's go look at that view. So I go to my person index file. And so this is, this is razor syntax, and this is, it looks a lot like HTML, because it was designed to look a lot like and HTML. No, notice here that it's taking in an I enumerable of right. person. Mm -hmm. That's good. That allows you to for loop over it. It's not taking an I queryable right. of person. Right. 
yeah, we don't want to be doing that. And also that this is, you know, I enumerable or I queryable, those are interfaces. It's not, you know, a list or, or some other strongly typed collection. Mm -hmm. So that allows us to be loosely coupled. And you really want your view to be as loosely coupled from everything else. It really is to take data and display it. So if we look at this, we've got, um, we are iterating over it. So, you know, we've got, we're writing out the headers here, display name for, um, you know, where it's filling those in. The reason we're using, instead of just filling in the blank, is that you can override, you can create attributes on your model that are going to change how that first name and last name are displayed. So then we have a, a for loop uh, that's just iterating over that I enumerable, and it's, or, and it's going to show, for each one, it's going to show uh, the information. So we do display for, on first name and display for on last name. We don't do display for on ID, and that's by convention. It knows that that's a primary key, and we don't want to display it. If we did want to display it, we could go in here and edit this and add in another you know, TD and, and write in our IDs. And there's lots of choices here. Mm -hmm. There's third-party libraries. There's uh, other, other people's view on how this should look. Yeah. There's fluent interfaces you can get. <coughs> right. There's few, fluent interfaces you can get. Your view is up to you. There's different view engines. Yeah. And there's one called Enamel. There's um, uh, there's Spark. Spark. A friend of mine, uh, Ben, is building one called Parrot. Parrot is a great view engine. Yeah. So again, this idea that you should be able to plug these things in. We talked a bit about being able to remove the Web Forms engine. That's a micro optimization, right. but it shows that you can. Yeah, and that's what's interesting. So know that there are choices. So really, you know, you've got a controller, which is which is a class. Where you can extend that class. You can change it around. You've got uh, your models. You can handle your models in pretty much any way you want to do, as long as you're passing information to a view. And then your your view, like you said, there's view engines. There's uh, you can write your own custom helpers. So there's all kinds of pluggability points in here. And an MVC, you know, it's it's kind of uh, I think it it treads a nice balance between being a construction kit and being something actually useful. So I can do file new project and start working on this right away, um, you know, and I've got something usable and I can browse through people and I can edit people and, you know, in a few minutes. Um, but then I can also, you know, uh, if I want to go through and start really changing things out, I can, yeah. right? So actually what I, what I do want to do now is uh, I want to go in and change that model class and see, uh, see how badly I break things. So, uh, I'm going to go into my person class here, and we'll add a new property. And we'll do uh, age, integer age. Sound good? Anything else you want to add? No, it's fine. Okay. <coughs> so now I'm going to go into my package manager console. So now things are out of sync. We've got a problem because my database does not have that integer age column. Right. And also my, my views don't have that integer age. My, my control, you know, nothing, nothing in my... Um, Views is set up with that. So, so, could you go into the database and update it manually? I sure could. Yeah, but then I've you know then I'm managing things myself. Right. Right. And then you need to think about how you're going to version that. Exactly. Or you could write custom SQL yourself. Yep. yep. And run it against the database Which, and manage that. Yep. So what what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use uh, I'm going to create and I'm going to add a new migration. So I'm going to say add. And I, I can call this whatever I like. I'm calling it added okay. age. And then I'm going to, and so here, let's look at what that did. So this is actually pretty readable, right? This is saying to move, to run this migration, we're going to add a new column. And it's going to add, you know, to the people class, and it's going to add an age, and it's an integer. And it's not knowable, okay? So then to... Uh, a nice thing about migrations, you want to be able to migrate up and down. So you want to be able to, to run this migration, it's going to add the age. To remove, the, remove it, I mean, this, you can read this and mm -hmm. you know, get a pretty good idea. Right. And that would be a happen. destructive down. Right, it's, it's going to delete it. So <laughs> I, if I did want to, you know, if I wanted to change that, and I wanted to say before deleting this data, you know, archive it, move it off somewhere, or whatever, rename that column, I, I could do that. So this is code. This is, this is just code that I can go in and, and start messing with. So I'm not done. I've, I've added the migration, but I also need to update database. So this is where it's going to go in and keep my database in sync uh, with my application. So here I'm going to say update database. So now it's actually going and running, running that, updating my database. 
Now, um, one thing that we still haven't done, the person controller actually really doesn't care because it's just returning, you know, it's just working with a person class. So th there's no, it doesn't know about age, which is really nice. This is kind of that separation of concerns, right? So the right, unless there were calculations specific to age, there's no reason for it to know. Right. <coughs> but if we look at that view, so we go in and we start looking at the person views. Well, if I create or, you know, if I view or edit, let's take a look at what happens when we edit. There's, of course, no age here because I created this scaffolding before the age even existed. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take advantage of the fact that scaffolding is really fast. Okay. And, you know, I haven't done any customization on that yet. So I'm actually just going to delete the person view, or the person views and that person controller. Okay. So that's bad, but it's, you know, it's good that you're doing that. So go ahead and do that. But okay. one of the things that's interesting, so John is choosing to re-scaffold. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Pardon me, hang on. <coughs> I'm dying here, guys. John is choosing to re-scaffold. He could uh, do, he's a custom scaffolder mm -hmm. and scaffold his own thing because the, the app that you're going to ship is not going to look like this. Right. He could update the view. Mm -hmm. He could have had a partial view for person. Yep. And he could have said render partial and had that person. And if you have a large application where you're going to be seeing people everywhere, yeah. you probably would have want to have a partial, partial view. representative view. Then you would put in age one time. Yeah. So exactly. So then I wouldn't be rescaffolding or changing. I wouldn't worry about one view. I'd worry about and and you can think of if you've done you know web forms, you can think of that as like a user control. It's a right. way of kind of scoping down. You know, one th the responsibility of displaying a person really just goes in one place, and so that's in that in that control. Exactly, keeping, so, keeping things dry. Yep. But you know, the idea with scaffolding, I mean, it's it's good. It's workable code. This is it's been security reviewed. It's been performance reviewed and all that. But really, the the focus of scaffolding is more around getting you some workable code that you can then go do something with. Exactly. So I would recommend that you know you don't think of your your scaffolded code as your production code necessarily. It's kind of a starting place. Right. <clears throat> and then the, again, if you're really into scaffolding, the idea that you could customize it. Yeah. And scaffold what you want. Custom scaffolders, exactly. So I, I can go in here and I'm going to browse to person. Okay, so now Bob has an age of zero. So I can go in and, you know, I'll change that age to monkey. All right, well, so here we've got a problem. That age field is, you know, it's required and monkey is not going to work for that. So, so we've got that custom valid. We've got a that was AJAX validation. It was unobtrusive validation. That's already hooked up there. So now when I uh, I set it to zero again, that was beautiful, John. So I'm going to set it actually to you know 60. Okay. So then there we've got that. So what we've seen there is we've got our model. Our model is our our kind of source of truth of you know what that person looks like as far as the application code looks like as far as the application knows. You know, when it's thinking about business objects, it, it's models. Right, right. And then uh, controllers, that's the logic, and view is the presentation. And then the whole thing about source of truth of data, you know, some of you may have cringed when I said, well, that model is the source of truth for, for the person. Well, it is for the code, from the point of view of the code, but the database <coughs> has a different source of truth for person, and, that, and it's got its person table. Right. And so we need to keep those two in sync, and so the way we're doing that is with entity framework migrations. But well, of course, as as the developer, you get to decide. <coughs> Pardon me, guys. They're cutting away. The director's like, oh, he's moving. He's going to call us. <coughs> it's up to you as a developer to decide what the source of truth is going to be. If you right. really love the database to be the source of truth, then you're doing database first development. Yeah. And that's fine. Yeah. Or maybe you want an ER diagram to be the source of truth. Or maybe you're doing BDD. You know, it's, it's up to you. So you can go top down, bottom up, the middle. Yeah. But once you've declared that authoritative source of truth, trust it. Yeah. So in this case, you're doing code first, and that's driving your migration strategy. Exactly, exactly. And, and you know, you can make some choices over time. So you can say, during development, my source of truth is my model. You know, and I'm going through and I'm making these changes and I'm able to rev my model and update my, run these migrations and update my database. And then you say, okay, now it's time for me to start to move to production. And now I've got production data and now I need to change how I'm thinking about my application. And so maybe at that point I stop using my, I start moving to another, you know, migration strategy using, uh, you know, say for instance, the database first migration. And there, there are a lot of systems out there for doing that. 
I think we're good on time. I guess I, I could go ahead and uh, deploy this. Do you think that good sounds luck. good? All right, we'll see what happens. So I'm going to take this, and I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to go into the Windows Azure uh, portal. So here I'm going to go manage.windowsazure.com. I'm going to sign in. I want to point out, this is kind of funny, but I, I long ago have this email, johngalloway.gmail.com, and I still use that when I sign into Microsoft accounts, kind of just to, to let people know, like we work with. <laughs> this is your this is your tiny <coughs> this is your tiny subversive little bit of. It's not that subversive. That's no, it's not a subversive at I've all. I've talked to people. That, <laughs> oops. Um, hang, on, hang on. Let me turn off my iPhone right. while you tell me about your Gmail account. All right, there we go. I've talked to people that are like, you know, I started to sign up for a Microsoft account, but I don't have a Hotmail or whatever. What do I do? And I just, you know, it's. Uh, I just have this image of you shaking your tiny fist yeah, yeah. outside Building Thirty Six. <laughs> I have a Gmail. You can't hurt me. Well, I've got, I've got so many emails. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to go in. This is the, the. If you haven't seen it before, this is kind of the portal. This is where I would create a new, uh, you know, and I've got all these different things I could create: cloud services and databases and all that. I'm going to create a website. So creating a website is, is kind of this new thing that they added, and I really like it. It's a very kind of lightweight model. So before, if you started, if you looked at Windows Azure for a long time and got kind of scared and confused, uh, like I was, it, it was kind of a lot to work with. There, were, there was a lot of power, and there was a lot of sliders and gears and configurations and things to worry about. So the idea with websites is bringing things down to start simple and scale up as you need. So you can add in these services. I'll be talking about that later this afternoon. A lot of things you can enable and turn on, but you can start simple. And I, I really like that kind of idea of, you know, start simple and add in the complexity as you need it. So I'm, I'm creating a new website, and I'm, calling, I'm saying quick, quick create. And what exactly, what should we call this? Let's, let's say, please, Scott, don't die. <laughs> There's, I think they're putting together like a, um, <clears throat> some kind of collection online. Right, save, save for save, us. Save, save Hanselman. Okay. <laughs> So please, Scott, don't die. Dot win, dot Azure websites dot net. So an important thing to point out here it's kind of telling me the status and it's creating this. Um, an important you know thing to realize there that is the URL for the site. So it's it's please, Scott, don't die. Dot Azure websites dot net. Um, you really did it. Yeah. Is that okay? <laughs> this is an actual thing. <laughs> so uh, and if you browse to it now, it's going to have like a. It's not. Actually, we're not live yet. You know, it's it's going to say, you know, please wait. I'm still going to check it. It should have a uh, construction man. You know, that little construction man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, so so it you know kind of created this site for me. That is a unique URL. So nobody else can ever create. Please, Scott, don't die until I delete it. And you know, this is going to mess up because everyone on Twitter is going to hit this. If somebody right now while is, you're is, deploying is and the whole deploy the is going to fail. Yep. Um, and that could happen. You should probably deploy quickly. Uh, I don't know. I kind of have fun talking. <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Download Publish Profile. So there's a lot of ways that you can deploy. You can use Git Deploy. You can use all kinds of different things. Um, the, the publishing features in Visual Studio work really well, as you'd hope, <laughs> with Azure. And you just, so, you just downloaded that, but you have a database associated with this? I do. And that's somehow the knowledge of that is in that Publish Settings file? Yes. Yes. So, and also, um, that's part of the reason I enabled migrations. Honestly, is you know, migrations is a good practice. But I had some really quick demos that I'd done. I tried to deploy them to Azure websites, and and it didn't have the, the Visual Studio deploy features. Didn't show the the possibility of doing that. And I, I talked to Syed, the PM for this, and and he said, well, that's because it's a bad idea. Like we don't want you to deploy a database using Entity Framework code first and not have migration set up. Because it's very easy for you to get in a really busted state where you are deploying code that breaks your database, and now you're deployed uh, you know, on your production site. Yeah, so that's a good strategy. I mean, even if it's not Entity Framework migrations, you need to have some migration strategy. Right, right. You don't want to be logging into production and then adding columns. Yep, exactly. So now I'm in my application. So I'm going to right click on this, and I'm going to say Publish. So I right click the, the application, I say Publish, and I'm going to import this Publish Settings. So this Publish Settings, let me talk about this. This does contain that login information. It contains information about you know, how to connect to a database, how to deploy things. It contains passwords and all that. This file you do need to safeguard. So when it adds it into my application, it's going to encrypt all that. So as far as what I check into source code. Mm -hmm. That's an um, impressive password. 
It is quite a password, isn't it? <laughs> that was automatically generated for okay. me. So, um, so this goes through and it, you know, it shows all those things are filled in. It got those from the published profile. Okay. I just validated that that it's all correct. And I hit next, and here's where. Uh, this is going to say, what database stuff do you want to deploy? So this says, you know, do you want to include the default connection, the person context, et cetera? So I'm going to say yes, and I want to execute code first migrations. Um, if I didn't have migration set up, this person context wouldn't be available for me to deploy. All right. Okay. So now, um, so now I'm going to go in and I'm going to publish this. I'm going to pick that, pick the connection. Yeah, yeah, actually, I don't have one there, and I'm not sure why I don't have one. Do you want to pick the one that it, it gave you? Yeah, but that that one's actually for a different website. I'm going to see what happens. You oh. think I should do that? No. Hey, every every good demo starts well with, I'm just going to push the button and see what happens. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, so I don't have a database selected. I could go back and create a SQL database. No, nope, let's just go you, for you it. Mean, you, wait a second, you didn't put a SQL database in Azure? I didn't. So should I delete Please Scott Don't Die and try this again? Um, yeah, I mean, it, it won't work. Yeah. The other option would be to go into Azure, add a database, and then link it. But when you did your quick create? I think it's going to be easier to just do that. So we could do please, Scott, don't die, too. <laughs> All right, yeah. so here it's saying, yeah, of course, I, I should have created that database, and it's saying you don't have a database, so we can easily delete it. I gave it. you a subtle reminder <laughs> when I mentioned that the, 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 the um, published file would have all that. Ah, uh, yes, OK. So, so I'm going to create a new website. I deleted the old one. I'm going to say, please. Database don't die. Did I get it fast enough? I did. So I'm going to create that website. Ah, you know what I did? You I didn't, didn't pick. <laughs> <laughs> I've got eight minutes left. I'm going to totally get this. Go, 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 go. Okay. One of the things that's great about doing it live like this yeah. is that there is no post production, but we can pretend that there is. That's okay, John. We'll fix that in post. Uh, so I should do custom create. Ah. <laughs> okay, so I want to do that, and I want to create a database. So I'm going to say create a new SQL database, or I could use an existing one. All right. Uh, and I'm going to call, I think I want this to be person context. It's up to you. Uh, I'll call, I'll use default connection, I guess. Do you feel the pressure? I sure do. Yeah. It's a race against time, too, which is exciting. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, so that's that. I'm going to... Uh, I'm trying to think of other ways I can make this hard on you. <laughs> yeah. You know, the one thing... The one thing that's fun is person... The one thing that's fun is the, the password is a little tricky. You know it's review time. Okay, did I type that? Okay, and... Check it off. So there it's creating a database and associating it with my, mm -hmm. with my uh, website. So I can see it created the website already. It's creating the database. So it's spinning up a SQL database. And it's, it's associated my strong password with it. So now let's go in. What was that called? Please, please database, please exist, I believe. Now you've forgotten the URL. <laughs> So here, this is this shows the database is set up, shows that you know that it's linked and all that. So now I'm going to go back over here and I'm going to download those, uh, download that published profile. I'm not going to reset my deployment credentials. Okay, so I'm downloading that published profile, and again, this this includes my deployment stuff, but it also includes my um, my database connection stuff. So we'll go through and we'll do this again. So I'm going to say publish. And I'm not going to use the profile I used before. I'm going to import this again. And I'm going to say, use that please database, please exist. Okay. I don't want to save those changes. OK, so let's validate that connection. So it's going out and it's checking you know, that it can connect to it. And it's still checking. That's the circle of patience. There it is. OK. So now I can go in, and there I've got my database connection, right? Okay. You better publish quick before it messes it up. All right. So, and I'm going to call, uh, let me see, configure database updates. No, I don't want that. I do want to execute migrations. So I'll say next. Go ahead and back up. I'm sorry. I want to make sure everyone understood that. <coughs> the execute code first migrations. Yeah. What this is going to do is that when the app starts up, 
it's going to... At startup time, Entity Framework will run the migration. Yep. So it'll go through and it'll look at all those migration steps and it'll say, we need to create a person. If there was a seed method, it would add that seed data and all that stuff. Uh, so then I'm going to say next. Here's a great feature. This start preview, actually, um, this preview thing is going to show all the changes. Mm -hmm. Now in this first deploy, it's actually got to deploy a lot of, so I'm going to publish while I'm talking. But on that first deploy, it's got to uh, deploy all those NuGet packages, all the DLLs, and all that. So this, this first deploy can take a little bit of time. Actually, that was pretty quick. Um, <laughs> beautiful. Um, so then I could go through and troubleshoot. Um, you want to debug it? I don't know. We've got five minutes left. Well, Four minutes left. I mean, it didn't work. Yeah. You know, what I'm wondering is maybe we should do a break, debug it, and show it, show what it was after the break. Or we could make people wait uncomfortably <clears throat> wait uncomfortably while we debug it for the next five minutes. I think I'd rather do it during the break. And, All right, and it's show your afterwards. business. Okay. So this is the cliffhanger. The cliffhanger. Yes. Will, Will John it work? successfully Will it work? deploy a database <laughs> in Microsoft Azure? Will the yellow screen of death Will it appear? continue? Yeah. Did you guys on Twitter mess this up because you were it's hitting that URL while fault. he was trying to do a publish? <laughs> we'll find out after this.